Hey everybody, this is Josh with Tag and Tackle. I really appreciate you checking out the first of what I hope to be many videos on our new YouTube channel. Tagandtackle.com has been around for a couple years now, and I won't spend too much time on this video talking about what we do and why we do it, but the goal is to help people get into fishing and simplify the process. We focus a lot on bass because that is where my personal heart and soul is. Uh, although we all fish for salmon, trout, steelhead, whatever else is around here. We love fishing, but mostly I try to focus on helping people get into bass fishing. And in fact, today, that's exactly what we're going to talk about. When I got exposed to bass fishing for the first time, I almost didn't go down the rabbit hole. There was just too many baits, techniques. It seems like everybody had 15 rods. It just felt way too overwhelming for me. And I learned that it did not need to be overwhelming. Uh, in fact, if you are a trout fisherman, if you've done a little bit of trout fishing or any kind of fishing really, but you have the basic gear, you can probably go out and start fishing for bass. That's what we're going to talk about today. Let's get into it. All right, so let's go through this email. I have never really fished for bass before. I'm bringing my kids, so we're planning to use spinning rod setups. Any advice on lures? I have trout, steelhead, salmon spinner, spoons, plugs, and jigs. Would there be certain sizes or colors of those that would work best? I think I have a few soft plastics, like Senkos. I heard the wacky worm setup usually works for bass, but not sure how universal that is. Would this be better than spinners or jigs? Any advice on hook size and weights for the soft plastics? What is typically used for leader material? Wood, 10 pound, mono work. Just trying to bring the right stuff. So yeah, let's address the, the rod first. Uh, in fact, I would suggest probably starting with a spinning rod. So if you have a trout rod uh, that is uh, between six and seven feet long, again, we're not talking what's the ideal length for every technique at this point, just somewhere in the six to seven foot area, ballpark, you're good to go. Uh, as far as power goes, Anything from ultra light to medium. Ultra light might be a little light for certain techniques, but uh, light, medium light, and medium, you're good to go. In fact, I might recommend you start there. Most of my fishing, uh, at least the year round bass fishing where I find success, it's a lot of finesse up in Oregon. We have a lot of very clear water, um, a lot of small mouth, so it tends to be smaller baits do a little bit better a lot of the time. At least where I fish, we definitely have lakes with, with killer largemouth, don't get me wrong, but I fish in the greater Portland area, the Willamette, the Columbia, those kind of things. Uh, I tend to find a lot of success on the finesse stuff, which lends towards a spinning rod anyway. So if you've got a spinning rod, you're in luck. Grab that sucker and see what baits you got. All right, next up was the question about spinners. Um, inline spinners, you don't see bass fishermen fish too terribly often. Uh, like panther martins or rooster tails, but they definitely work. And so my suggestion was check and see if you have a rooster tail, uh, particularly in black. That works very well for me. Um, spoiler alert, I did recommend that. And this gentleman's uh, buddy swung a rooster tail in black and said he caught a very nice bass on it. Uh, later on, I was actually shad fishing on the Willamette River, and it was super slow that day. Even though the shad fishing was supposed to be incredible this season, I went on the day with super low flows and got nothing. Got bored after a while, and I only had my uh, trout gear because I purposely left all my bass stuff at home so I wouldn't be tempted to go bass fishing. But after a few hours, I gave in to that, and I went bass fishing. So all I had was my ultralight ugly stick, that I use just for shad and you know beat around kind of trout fishing and this rooster tail right here I picked up it's a uh, black and chrome with a little kind of bait fish pattern on the blade and uh, I believe this is a one ounce or I'm sorry one eighth ounce and uh, I just went and started chucking that around and within a couple minutes caught my first bass and they were chasing it like crazy I don't often fish I can't remember the last time that I threw a rooster tail out there to try to get a bass and it works great. So don't, just because you don't see it very often, don't assume an inline spinner like a panther martin or rooster tail won't work. In fact, many of our trout lures are advertised to work just fine with bass and many of them do. So give that a shot if you got one of those in your, in your tackle box. 
There was also a question about plugs. I love fishing with crankbaits, uh, and you hear bass guys call them crankbaits a bit more often than plugs. Um, if you have certain trout plugs, actually, crankbaits would work absolutely great. Uh, salmon and steelhead, I've caught bass fishing for salmon and steelhead as well. They tend to be something like a wiggle wart in bright pink. Um, yeah, they'll hit that stuff. There are some that are certainly more ideal for bass. I mean, generally you want something that's going to get down to the bottom and kind of bang along whatever um, covers down there, rock, you know, wood, whatever that might be. That's really what you want with bass. So they're fished a little bit differently. Um, but if you have something in pink seems seem to work. Uh, chartreuse is even a little bit better for um, the bass. The smallmouth in particular seem to really like chartreuse. But generally with bass, you're going to want something a little bit more natural and bait fish profiled a lot of the time. These are not hard and fast rules, but, you know, gray, white, black, something that is perch, bluegill colored, uh, something that kind of represents a, a bait fish or a crawfish, which is major forage for many bass. So uh, at that time, I think I recommended to this gentleman if you had anything in red or orange, um, a few bass that I were catching that time of year, I was pulling out some darker red uh, crawfish out of some of their mouths. So, yep, that can work. Also, and I just mentioned some information on colors. I really wouldn't get too hung up on colors, though, honestly. Give it a shot. If you got it, try it. If it's not working after 10 or 15 minutes, try something else anyway. Don't be afraid to give it a shot and don't feel like you got to go run out and buy a bunch of new stuff and a bunch of new colors in order to have some success. If you get the bass at the right time, you get your bait in front of them, your chance of getting bits fairly good. So give it a shot. So yeah, the mighty Senko. If you have a Senko, they are great. The wacky rigged worm definitely is fairly universal. A lot of guys throw them during the kind of the spawning phase in spring, particularly dragging them across beds. That doesn't mean you can't catch them outside of that, for sure. I often will toss them upriver in some current and let them float down, and they'll get tagged uh, quite often, and I'm sure I'm not <laughs> floating them right over beds. So if you have a Senko, great. Throw it on a hook, give it a shot in a wacky rig kind of format. Hook sizes for that and hook styles. Uh, I like to use like a straight shank worm hook or a drop shot hook or a Nico hook. However, if you are just talking trout gear, you may not have any of that stuff. So you can try a good old octopus hook. Uh, as far as size goes, I like to use, it depends on the soft plastic. Senkos are kind of thick. Um, I like to use like a size one or one knot hook, generally speaking, for a wacky rig. Uh, if that isn't, if you're finding it tough to get bites, you can try a thinner worm, like a zoom trick worm or something like that. But again, most, Trick worms are fairly common too, but not as commonplace as a Senko. So if we're just talking about what you might have in your box, grab that Senko. If you got an octopus hook around that kind of one one knot size, which you may or may not for trout, give it a shot. All right, jigs. Uh, the question was, would jigs work? There are a lot of different types of jigs, so that's where I needed a little bit more information here. Uh, smallmouth and uh, largemouth as well, especially in colder water in the winter months, will eat up a hair jig. Those look similar to our marabou jigs. Marabou jigs are used for bass as well in some places. Uh, that can work, totally. When we talk about jigs with bass fishing, it's generally a bass jig, kind of a rubber or silicone skirted jig. That you may not have, but if you have the right size and style of something like a marabou or a hair jig, you could give that a shot, for sure. Um, but without knowing more about what kind of jigs we were talking about, that one was a little bit tough for me to answer, so I had some more questions on that. So let's talk about the line question a little bit. 10 pound mono. Yes, that can work. Uh, again, that is, if I were to suggest somebody getting started who had trout gear and wanted to use that just to get into bass fishing, I would suggest a spinning rod and some kind of finesse type gear. Uh, 10 pound mono will work just fine for that. This might be the one thing that uh, if, if I could up great anything that I had. Mono has its applications for sure, um, but especially in a finesse setup, I like to use the braid to fluorocarbon leader or straight fluorocarbon. But again, if that's what you got, 10 pound is not too heavy for this stuff. Grab it, throw it, you'll be just fine. Mono tends to be more buoyant than fluorocarbon. Uh, and so it, it kind of floats. 
If you have a bait on there that's heavy enough, it's going to, of course, make the line sink anyway. It's just going to sink more slowly. Um, and it has a little impact on the, the action of the bait as it falls. But at this point, don't let it feel like it's going to be a problem. If anything else, maybe it'll help if the bass really wants it in their strike zone a little bit longer and it falls a little bit more slowly in front of them. You never know. Much heavier mono could make it a little bit challenging in some of these applications, but 10 pound mono, yeah, get out there too. If you got anything around that eight, 12, you're probably all right. So as a bonus, I wanted to share with this gentleman my suggestion, especially if you're taking a young one and if you wanted to bring the right stuff and you're willing to go buy a couple little things, again, your spinning rod's fine, your line's fine. Let's say you wanted to spend 10 or 15 bucks on a couple lures. My number one go-to when I wanna make sure I get bit or somebody I'm taking fishing gets bit is the Ned Rig. Everybody's probably heard this and seen this. Um, this is a Z-Man Shrooms. I think this is a 1 15th ounce jig head with a Z-Man TRD Finesse Plastic. I think this one's Watermelon Red Flake. I'm not sure exactly the name. We have these on tagandtackle.com. I think you can get a pack of heads and a pack of plastics for less than 10 bucks. These things are small mouth candy and even large mouth candy a lot of the time. They're very easy to fish. You chuck it out, you can let it sink to the bottom. A lot of times you're just gonna get hit on the, on the fall. Once they're on the bottom, these are designed so that the weight goes down first and then it'll kind of rest flat. It's got a little mushroom head and this sucker, let me get down here, will just sit straight up off the bottom and can kind of hop around. You can drag it, you can swim it. You, you really almost can't fish this incorrectly. Um, these guys just catch fish. So when all else fails, or you want to make sure your odds are really high, throw this out there. If you're not getting bit on this, you're probably not fishing around fish. So you need to move and try something else. I think that's it. I think that was my suggestion. Really, at the end of the day, fishing is fun. needs to stay fun. It does not need to be overwhelming. If you have some trout gear and you got some lighter stuff, like the things we discussed in that range, you're good to go. Take it, go fishing, give it a shot, have a great time. Thank you all for stopping by. Again, this is Josh with Tag and Tackle. Check us out at tagintackle.com. Like, subscribe. I hope you're putting out more of these, have some guests on, bring in some guides that I fish with, talk about all sorts of kinds of fishing, uh, again, particularly bass fishing. But hey, we might even sprinkle in some fly fish and talk about some local rivers at some point. So anyway, have a great day. Take care.